Diamond Traders, welcome to the Asian preview and the North American wrap from your friends at Privateer FX. It was another day of Brexit Pong. Early in the uh, New York session, the FT had reported that the, a deal has been reached between uh, May and Juncker. And take a look at the uh, Take a look at the British pound chart here today. I, I've got a 15-minute chart just to show you some of the wild price swings that we saw. So when the FT came out, you see cable went from 134, 35, 40 area. Had a big move up above 135, topped out here at 135.38. Then didn't do much for the next couple of hours. A tweet came out from the BBC saying there was a report after their lunch there is no deal done today. It sounded like uh, <clears throat> Northern Ireland threw a wrench in things. You see the cable reaction here. It was very choppy around 135 the figure. Went up, went down from 135 the figure down. All the way down, made a new low for the day. Got down to as low as 134.15 quite quickly. Market's long some sterling, so it, it did struggle rallying. I think positioning is a little bit of a problem as... Sterling has had a, a nice, nice move up, as you can see here from the daily, you know, from this 130 past uh, month or so, and uh, you know, Juncker and May came out after their lunch and tried to calm the nerves a bit and express confidence that a deal could be reached, just not today. And they have, uh, you know, another week or so until their their, their next meeting. Um, so Sterling kind of quieted quieted down um, as the as the morning here progressed, and uh, we closed out here right around one thirty four seventy five. Let's take a look at. Uh, we spoke yesterday about the gap open that we saw in a bunch of the dollars and in, in the S&Ps and, and NASDAQ. Let's take a look here at the, uh, let's take a look at the NASDAQ first. So we had a gap higher open from Friday. This is Friday's close, 63.45. Gapped open higher to 63.71. Didn't do much during Asia or European, during the European hours. And then you can see here right on the U.S. Open, the gap was filled with pretty much in the first hour of trading, in the NASDAQ, that is, and then closed lower on the day. So it's a pretty ugly bar. It's not an outs it, didn't, it was not an outside reversal day lower. This was Friday's low on the Trump-Russia investigation, and we, you know, we had this kind of hammer top. But we did, we did have the gap open. We filled the gap easily, closed near the lows of the day. Pretty ugly price action here in, uh, in the NASDAQ, which there continues to be a rotation out of tech and into um, the S&P 500. So the S&P 500, here's a 240 chart. It took the entire day. You can see here I highlighted the gap fill. So we closed here on Friday, 2642.50, gapped open. Yesterday, 26.54, so about a 12-point gap. Made new all-time highs here on, on the open. And then, as you can see, as the day progressed, uh, we finally did indeed fill the gap. And, and like the NASDAQ, we closed right near the lows of the day. So this, again, this this chart is uh, this is pretty ugly. Here's a daily where we made the new all-time high. There are a couple reasons for this, we think. One was... Um, you know, it's interesting how the the S and P's and the Nasdaq they couldn't this this tax euphoria of getting the deal done over the weekend it couldn't even it couldn't even last for a day. So there is some buy the rumor sell the fact going through here, um, and and in the uh, right around midday in New York. Uh, there was some equity, so some of the equity selling was even blamed on the back. Uh, there was a tweet from the Freedom Caucus saying they're getting a bit itchy. They're holding a meeting before the vote. And so there was some selling pressure there. 
And there was also a, a tweet that came out that uh, that uh, Japan is boosting their missile defense against the North Korea threat. So kind of a combination of those two things sent uh, sent risk lower. Let's pop over the dollar yen chart. You can see how uh, see how dollar yen fared. And th this is when that tweet came out, right around uh, you know, one, one or two o'clock in the afternoon, and it, it was just grinding lower. And uh, we still haven't filled. It's interesting how the equity complexes have filled their gaps today, but the the dollar gap higher on the tax euphoria, uh, they have, we have not filled those in yet. So I, we suspect that we're going to get. We close somewhere right around one twelve twenty in dollar yen on Friday, fifteen twenty. Wouldn't be at all surprised to see this get filled in during Asia and kind of catch up with equities. That's the dollar, the dollar yen. Dollar Swiss is miles away. Uh, I'm not sure what we're missing here, but uh, Dollar Swiss had it was up at one point. It was up about a percent on the session. We closed out here down at 97.58. <clears throat> Open up here in Asia yesterday at 98.03, so it's a pretty pretty big gap open, and and then you know grinded higher throughout throughout uh, Europe and North America. Now we've got what is it six six red hourly bars in a row. So that's finally starting to come back down and and, and play catch up with dollar yen. But there must have been some big Swiss yen uh, Swiss yen selling going on. But again, we think we can close we, we can close this gap and. Uh, you know that would bring us all the way back down to, you know, this 97 handle. So this has got some room. There's uh, took some speculative short positions here, overnight dollar yen and uh, and in uh, and in dollar Swiss. Let's pop over to the euro chart. We'll take a look and see what that. Um, let's see how that fared today. Pretty quiet session. Overall, we did get down to this uh, 118.30. There's some uh, there's some interesting demand, I think, down in this 118 figure to 20 zone. Didn't quite get down to that to that area that we want. We're looking to buy, but again, you know, we we did close Friday here at 118, right around 119. The figure opened up lower in the gap, about a 30 or 40 point move lower on the Asian open, and you know, stayed relatively heavy. So. We could easily go back up and, and test these old hourly lows and and last Friday's close. Um, so again, going back to just to summarize, I think we got to keep a close eye on the Nikkei today and uh, and the S and P's and and Nasdaq because we don't like the price action. Uh, you know, making all time highs after a fundamental news event, i.e. the tax reform bill, and then we saw decent selling. Like I said, they, they couldn't even, you know, the gap was filled before the uh, before the market even closed today in, uh, in New York. Taking a look at the calendar in Asia, we've got, uh, we have the Australian retail sales coming up here very shortly, and that tends to be a Kind of a gappy type move, and then unless it's a huge miss one way or the other, it tends not to fall through. And especially on a a day when you've got uh, the RBA, which again looks fairly uneventful. Uh, in between there, we or just before the Aussie retail sales, we have RBNZ's Governor Spencer speaking. Listen out for anything about he is going to be speaking about low inflation. Listen out for anything about uh, if he's following the kind of the Fed rule book about inflation, low inflation being transitory, because the uh, you know the positioning is still short Kiwi. Let's take a look at the daily chart here, and uh, didn't do much today. Inside day, very quiet actually uh, in the New Zealand dollar. Uh, but you know that there's risk here with the with the short positioning if if. He is sounding at all upbeat or hawkish on inflation. We could get a move up. Um, you know, there's no reason not to retest this 69, 40, 50 area. And uh, you know, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, we have the 
you know, this service is PMI out of China, and, uh, and then we have a, a load of PMI, a lot of the European PMI, Spain, Italy, France, Germany, uh, UK services PMI are all um, during the European session. So tune back in for the European Open, and uh, good luck trading today. All the best. Cheers.